All right, welcome to the explainer. So right now, there's an object from deep space hurtling through our cosmic neighborhood. And honestly, it's glowing so brightly that it's forcing scientists to ask a truly profound question. Okay, let's just dive right into this. This very question, it's at the heart of the entire mystery of this object, 3i Atlas. It really challenges our assumptions and, well, it opens up some fascinating and, for some, pretty controversial possibilities. So let's get the basics down first. What is this thing and, you know, where did it even come from? Back in the summer of 2025, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, that's ATLAS for short, it picked up something new. Now, the 3i in its name tells you the most important part of its story. It's only the third interstellar object we've ever found. And that's really what makes this thing so special. You see, unlike Halley's Comet or all the asteroids in our own belt, which are all part of the Sun's family, so to speak, this object is just passing through. I mean, it's a true alien, in the most literal sense of the word. Just three. That's it. Before 3i slash Atlas, we had Oumuamua back in 2017, and then 2i slash Borisov in 2019. Each one of these is just an incredibly rare chance to study a piece of another solar system, right here in our own backyard. It's amazing. And this thing is moving, I mean, it's moving incredibly fast. So fast that our sun's gravity has no chance of capturing it. It's on this path that's just going to whip it around the sun and then fling it right back out into the void, never, ever to return. This is a one-time show. But you know, as we started to get a better look at this visitor, the story got, well, a lot stranger. The problem wasn't its path through space. It was its appearance. Now, what's really interesting here is that description, fuzzy snowball. That sounds a lot like a comet, right? You've got an icy core, and it's surrounded by a hazy cloud of dust and gas we call a coma. But that simple explanation, well, that's where the trouble really begins. And this is the big question, right? The one that astronomers are just wrestling with. The object is incredibly far away from us, yet it's shining with an intensity that just doesn't make any sense for a typical comet of its expected size. Yeah, and this chart just puts the scale of the problem into perspective. When we compare 3i slash Atlas to our last interstellar visitor, the comet 2i slash Borisov, and we put them at the same distance, Atlas is at least 200 times brighter. I mean, that's a huge anomaly. It's something that just screams for an explanation. Okay, so the most obvious answer, the simplest one, is that it's just a really big, really active comet. But, you know, when you start digging into the details, that nice, tidy theory, it kind of starts to fall apart. So on the left, you've got your typical comet. Its glow comes from sunlight hitting a cloud of both dust and gas. But with 3i slash Atlas, our analysis shows the dust cloud, but where's the gas? No detectable gas and no tail. And that's the big problem, right? You can't just violently throw out that much dust without gas coming along for the ride. It just doesn't work that way. So here's the bottom line. The engine that makes a comet bright seems to be missing a key part. To be this bright just by reflecting sunlight, it would have to be gigantic, like up to 20 kilometers wide. And an object that big showing up, that's a 1 in 10,000 year kind of event. It's just statistically really, really unlikely. And this is where the story takes a hard turn into some really fascinating, really out there territory. If it's not reflecting enough sunlight to explain its glow, well, what if the light isn't being reflected at all? This whole alternative idea comes from some key data in those Hubble images. The astrophysicist Avi Loeb over at Harvard noticed the dust cloud's brightness drops off incredibly steeply as you move away from the center. Now, that's not what you see with reflected sunlight. It's exactly what you'd expect to see if the dust was being lit up by something in the middle, kind of like a single light bulb sitting in a really thick fog. And the amount of power you would need to do that, it's just staggering. Loeb's calculations put it at about 10 gigawatts. I mean, to put that in perspective for you, that's the output of roughly 10 nuclear power reactors. That is a colossal amount of energy. Now, of course, before you jump to some really wild conclusions, scientists checked all the natural possibilities. Could it be a tiny black hole? Nope, not nearly enough power. A rare radioactive chunk from a star that exploded? Statistically almost impossible. What about friction from hitting space dust? There's just not enough stuff out there in space to generate that kind of light. So, okay, once you've ruled all that out, you're left with this really provocative idea. What if the central object isn't natural? What if it's artificial? A craft, maybe powered by something like nuclear energy. And that fuzzy glow we see, it's not a coma of gas and ice. 
It's just interstellar dirt and dust that the craft has picked up over its long journey, now being lit up from the inside. And what's so neat about this idea is that it completely solves the size problem. If it's making its own light, it doesn't need to be a 20-kilometer monster. It could be as small as 100 meters across, putting it in the same size class as Oumuamua and making it a much more statistically believable kind of visitor. Okay, so this is all a fascinating theory, right? But how do we get more data? How do we move this out of speculation and into actual observation? Well, the answer, surprisingly enough, is waiting for us at Mars. The thing is, because of its unique path, it's going to be really tough to see from Earth as it gets closer. It'll basically be lost in the sun's glare, but it will pass relatively close to Mars. And that gives us a perfect opportunity to use the really powerful high-rise camera on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to get a much, much better look. So, mark your calendars. October 3rd, 2025. That's the big day. That's when the high-rise camera gets its shot. Then, on December 17th, it makes its closest, though still very distant, pass by Earth. The images from that Mars flyby that could be what finally helps us solve this whole puzzle. And so that leaves us right here, with this huge question hanging in the air. Is 3i slash Atlas just a really fun space rock, as one scientist put it, an unusual but ultimately natural comet? Or are we seeing evidence of something else, a piece of technology from another civilization making its way through our solar system, shining a light for all of us to see? For now, the verdict is out in the cosmos. But the lie is coming. All indications, like all of them, is that that lie is going to be that there is a craft slowly making its way to us here on Earth. And that is the lie they're going to want you to believe. It's nuanced how they explain that, the nature of that threat. But that 100 fucking percent is the lie you are going to be told. You even got a date. People have been whispering a date for a long time now. I know where that lie comes from. I know specifically what document from the 70s initiated the idea of that lie. A classified document, that is the lie you will be told. You're going to be told that there is a craft on its way to Earth. That's the lie. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong.